Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Sunday Swings. Hope you're well. Hope you're all absolutely fantastic. Um, and thanks again for joining me. Um, as we did last week, we've got three swings that we're going to look through, three things that we're going to give advice on. Just a little bit of kind of what's coming up today. We've got um, one where we're talking about pull shots, hitting loads of pull shots out on the golf course and two reasons why that's happening for this golfer. Also about hips, getting those open impacts and almost a great way of generating some more power. And then finally, this right leg in the backswing. A lot of us make this mistake. So lots to be covered tonight. Um, but the first place I really want to start with this is your support towards the 72 hole marathon that I have started. So just to give you um, a rundown on what this is, and I will put the link down below in the video uh, once you finished and uh, alongside in the chat here. Uh, and, and just before I say this, anything that you could donate would be absolutely fantastic. So one of my good friends, Ryan, um, was diagnosed with cancer about two years ago, Hodgkin's lymphoma. And um, unfortunately, recently it has relapsed. And now he's got to go through another set of extensive chemotherapy and then a stem cell transplant. So I thought, well, better way to do something is um, do a 72 hole golf marathon. So June, July this year, just waiting to have it confirmed by a golf club. I will be playing 72 holes in a day and I will be joined by some fantastic guests. Um, Josh, my good friend, is going to join me throughout the whole of it. Uh, and it's going to be a long day, but we're going to raise a good amount of money or a lot of money, I should say, for a fantastic course. So I sort of set this ambitious, totally ambitious goal of £10,000 that I wanted to donate. And we are already at £2,471. So I just want to start off this whole live stream by saying, if you already have donated, thank you so much for that. Um, it, it's fantastic, the reaction everybody's given. It's fantastic um, that everybody has supported this. And like I said right at the start of the stream, a pound, two pound, 50 pence, whatever it is, if you could donate, we would all really appreciate it. Um, I'll put it in the chat now and then we'll get into um, some uh, golfing uh, chat, golfing talk and go through those golf swings that we've got to go through today. But yeah, I just wanted to basically just say thank you to you all if you have support already. And if you haven't, well, we would really appreciate it if you could. Okay, so the first place I really want to sort of start with this is, um, I guess with Justin Thomas from last week, little little tributes to Tiger throughout, little tributes dropping the golf club, as in, um, and what a performance. I think a lot of us had sort of ruled him out after the allegations or after the scenarios at the start of this year, um, and... Well, he, I think he's proved a lot of those doubters wrong. I mean, absolutely awesome from him. Awesome performance. What do you think about his performance? Because for me, I think that's one of the best performances we've seen in a long time out on the golf course. And that shot down the last, I'm just going to say, I 100% and Justin Thomas 100% thought that that was going to go in the water. 100%. Like, I was watching it, seeing this ball sort of take a little bit of a hook, take a little bit of a draw, and you're just seeing the water there, and you're thinking, ah, it's going to bounce left there. It's 100% bouncing into the water. Didn't. Absolutely didn't. Unbelievable. Okay. So, guys, uh, get in those comments down below. Um, it's great to hear kind of what you're enjoying on the channel right now. And um, I noticed a lot of you have been saying, when are we getting back to some course content? Um Unfortunately, if you are in the UK and you live in the UK, you'll understand the predicament we're in at the minute. We can't play golf in England, um, but as soon as we can, 29th, I think every single golfer, if you're watching in England right now, you're sort of counting that time down to be able to be back out on the golf course and hit that first tee shot. Where is your first tee shot going to go? I think I'm going to have some first tee nerves that I've not had in a long time. Like, it's, it's, it's going to be weird hitting it off grass. It's going to be weird seeing it sail down a fairway, not hitting net just in front of us. And it's, it's yeah, I mean, what is it not to look forward to? Put it that way. Okay, so the another talking point I want to get into before we get into the first swing of this evening is Ricky Fowler. 
Ricky, 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 what do we think? Like, my sort of opinion on this is when Ricky first came on tour, when he was signed with Puma and Cobra, he was like their idol, like their big player, um, their star-studded lineup. And he sort of uh, did the flag and, and carried the flag for Cobra and Puma. Now it's not the case. Now you've got Bryson, who is very much their focal point, and quite rightly in terms of what he's doing and what he's done for the game so far in just a short space of time. I think that whole thing has been a big toll on him in terms of confidence. He's not managed to put um, a lot of good performances in in the last year. His world ranking slipping right down. I'd love to hear what you think of this. I'd love to hear what you think on this. I've seen a lot of comments in from the Justin Thomas saying, Justin's a nice guy. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, he deserves to win so much. Yeah, I, I agree. Steve saying he uh, played last Friday uh, and he couldn't believe how well he played. You know what? It's funny, that, isn't it? You sort of forget all the bad shots that you've hit. Or if you're sort of playing a lot of golf and you're not playing too good, it's like all the things. When you're playing well and you're playing a lot, it's easy, isn't it? But, but let me rephrase that. Golf is never easy. We all know that. Um, but ultimately, um, what I was trying to say is, is the fact that when you're playing well, it, it feels easier. You feel in a nice rhythm. You feel good. When you're not playing well, you just remember everything that's bad. But this little bit of a layoff that we've all had in terms of golf, we've forgotten what a good shot looks like. We've forgotten, most importantly, what a bad shot looks like. So hopefully, when we get out on the golf course, we just start remembering what those good shots are like. I know I'm hoping and praying for that. Hoping and playing. Um, okay, so let's get into the first thing of tonight. We have got a double camera set up tonight for you. Um, before that, I'm going to see this. Um, Ricky has lost all his confidence. Justin uh, Goddard said that. Justin, I 100% agree on that. He has lost all his confidence. Gone. But how does he get it back? Like, I used to think of Ricky as being, gets the Masters. He always puts in a good performance. There's a few times where he nearly won. He nearly won at the Masters for a few times. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm a massive Ricky fan. I remember when I, when I was uh, a young, I mean, he's only young as well, but um, the fact that um, I hope he can put a good performance in the Masters and sort of surprise us all and get our back out on the course and put in a performance that builds up his confidence. Christopher's made a great point here. All his mates are playing better than him, makes it even harder for him. Yeah, you've got mates like, well, Justin Thomas, for one. You've got Jordan Spieth. All these friends of his have either won major championships, multiple, or won multiple times on tour. Now, Ricky obviously has won multiple times on tour, but for what the hype was about him when he first came out to what it is now, I think they're two totally different things. I imagine when he first came out, he was going to sort of be that mad person that won a lot and not done that. It's not done a lot. Okay, guys, let's get into the first swing of tonight. Um, I'm going to pull it up over here, and it is from Christopher, okay? So Christopher sent this in. Um, I'm going to read you what he's, he's, what he's written in here. So Christopher, I think you're listening here. Um, Christopher B, if this is you. This is um, your swing coming on right now. Um, so he sent me this in, saying, Hi, Alex, um, sending my golf swing. Uh, he plays with a seven handicap. His tendencies are tip pulls. Um, with a big shot club face sometimes. Also missing compression and iron shots. The only thing, uh, only videos I've got is a back view. Uh, hoping to get some tips from you. Listening all the way from Germany. So Christopher, we have got you for first up tonight. So we're going to be talking a little bit of, we're going to do this from the other camera guys. So let's jump to the full face camera. So on this full face camera, we're going to be talking tonight a lot about set up a lot about club phase and how we start this golf swing during the backswing because this gives us the best chance of having this club face in a nice neutral position through the takeaway also at the top and then why if it's closing the way back we might have this tendency to want to sort of dig out this club dig out this shot and that's not what we want we don't necessarily want that to happen so let's just go with what we're seeing in christopher's golf swing right now and then we're going to go back 
uh, and sort of go, okay, this is what's happening right now. How can we improve this? And how can we get this to feel much better in his swing? Now, remember, if you're watching this right now and you want your swing to analyze, it's really, really easy. You have to be a subscriber on the channel and you also have to send me them in via email and make sure you share this video and give this video a like. Happens every single Sunday at 7 p.m. UK time. So what we're seeing in Christopher's swing right now is through the takeaway, club face getting really close, bit a bit close at the top. Then as he starts in his downswing now, we have this sort of backing up motion, okay? So what I'm seeing here is the body's not getting very open. The body's not really active here. The arms are more active, which is why it's giving him sort of this intermittent kind of pulley hooky shot out on the golf course. And why he's not feeling that compression because that club face is closed and he's backing up and out of it. So I'm a big believer in this. Our brain's a magnificent thing. Even if we don't think we're a good golfer, we are a good golfer. We will organize movement around what this club face is doing. So if we can understand what this club face is doing, we then have a better chance of bringing it back into a nice neutral position. So on that point, this is what I want us to feel. So first and foremost, we've got to make sure we've got a nice neutral grip. That is the most important thing that we want to have. And I like to see this as two and a half to three knuckles on our lead hand. Grease points into our right shoulder. And again, we've got the badminton racket out because of space. Um, and then what I want you to do, Christopher, is, and this is for everybody, is grab your right hand, put it under your left. And I want you to start the golf swing by allowing that arm to sort of just work in and level with your hips. So the butt under the club is going to be pointing at your hip, okay? Now, for you, you've got this in a quite an exaggerated position. So what I'm going to ask you to do is, is try and feel as though you could shake hands with that golf club face. If it was too close, I couldn't shake hands with this. It's going to feel to you like it's somewhere around here, but in reality, we're going to be somewhere around here, not here. So then at the top, lead wrist is going to be flat. And then I want you to hit some shots, feeling as though you hit some punch shots. So that's going to help encourage us getting into that left-hand side, chest a little bit more over the golf ball, rather than backing up behind it. Now, the first and foremost, we've got to make sure we've got a good grip. And what I want you to make sure is that this halfway back position, it's going to feel very much like this, but in reality, it's somewhere around here. Okay? Not here, somewhere around here. So that's our first swing for today. So if you've got any questions on this, guys, and you're watching this right now, get in those comments down below. What does your takeaway look like? Where are you in your golf swing? We're saying if we're hitting those pull shots and those intermittent lack of kind of hooky shots or lack of kind of compression, we've said Christopher is very much backing out of it and he's very close to the takeaway. So we're going to try and feel the opposite to try and find that halfway point. I'm a big believer in this. If we find opposites, we can start to find that middle ground. Yes, of course, we've got to be wary of creating too many opposites. But first and foremost, that is what we want to feel. So Christopher... That is your swing analysis for this week. Don't forget, guys, we do have two more coming up this evening. So it's not just the one swing we have today. We have got the three, three golf swings, three golf swings. Um, okay, Christopher, what do you think of that? Get that comment down below. I'd love to hear kind of what you feel about that. Are you taking lessons right now? Um, so, yeah, get in those comments down below seen some good comments in here guys so let's read a few of them out since uh, i'm back sat down now and i can see this screen not the uh screen to my left um christopher put i'm going back to sort of ricky here um he puts too much pressure on himself um chris is nervous now no need to be nervous some simple points there make sure christopher more neutral through the takeaway it's going to feel like you're sort of opening it up make sure you got a neutral grip and i want you to focus on hitting those sort of punchier shots um, in between now and next week, and you can report back next live stream and let us all know how you got on. Um, Christopher, no problem at all. Don't forget, guys, we've got two more swings um, this evening. Um, and again, I'm going to sort of remind you about these are opening up into impact and what this right leg does in the backswing or your trail leg and, and how this can have a massive impact on you in transition. Okay, so um, Darren just asked a really good question here. How do you get your swing sent in? Well, first and foremost, guys, you have to be a subscriber to the channel. Um, I always put a post out towards sort of like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday time and give that a bit, give that 
uh, post a like, um, and then I send you my email and you can send me them in. So it's important that you uh, keep an eye on my community page here on YouTube because it gives you the best chance. Um, everybody hit the like button now, please. Joe, I would really appreciate it if you did. Um, it helps me, helps this channel grow. And yeah, I, I really want to get this channel to be as big as it can be because I really enjoy bringing this content and it'd be great to do it it's full time. Um, okay, so by the way, tomorrow, it's a little bit of a longer video. Um, I don't know how you all feel about this. Get in those comments, I'd love to sort of hear. Um, I am taking on a tour player. So you also saw my Road to the Open series. And by the way, on that note, I have entered the Open now. And um, I take on a tour player in a match. It's a bit of a longer video, longer than I usually put on the, on the channel here for us all. But yeah, okay. So uh, I don't want to give too much away. It's It's good. It's really good. So that's going to be out tomorrow at 3.30. Um, make sure you give that um, give that a watch. You really like it. Um, so Justin Goddard put, um, my problem is an outside swing path and uh, at the top of the backswing, my club is pointing to the right. So are you feeling as though you get a little bit across the line? Um, Justin, okay, we'll start off on this, guys, and getting those questions. Before we go on to the next swing, let me load the next swing up here. Um, so the next swing is coming in from... Let me load this in. Andy Beal is the next swing that we're going to do tonight, everybody. Um, we're going to load him in here. Um, and we're going to be talking about, he's, he's, he said to me, if he finds it hard to get open at impacts. I think a lot of us are in that same situation. So we're going to have a look at this now and we're going to talk about a few points here, which is going to help him get a little bit more open at impact. Um, and it's, it's funny, really. A lot of this is to do with his backswing, lifting up the club, everything working towards and then down. But first, Justin, let's have a look at just why you're getting a little bit across the line at the top and, in, and why does this sort of increase the likelihood of this um, position where we feel as though we're across the line at the top and then we start coming a little bit over. So let's sort of show you what across the line is. Across the lines, when we're saying the club's pointing out to the right and it's sort of working in this motion. We tend to sort of see this right elbow work off the side of the body rather than more on the side of the body. So what I'm going to say to you right now is if you're struggling with this flying right elbow at the top, we have to understand that during the backswing, our right arm wants to make this external rotation. So if you're watching this right now, you just sat down, you can do this sitting down, feel like you just make some moves like this. The chest may move a little bit, getting your right palm just to point to the sky at the top. If my right palm points to the sky at the top, this club face is not pointing to the right. If it's pointing over, it certainly is. So what we're going to encourage here is a lot more external rotation of our trail arm in this direction, okay? So this is just to answer um, Justin uh, Goddard's question. So he said he feels like he gets a little bit across the line and a little bit over. So what we're going to try and feel is it, and by the way, a lot of people, there's a lot of good swings out there we see now uh, Matt Wolf very much across the line at the top. And my opinion on this is you've got to match patterns of movement. But at the same time, if we sort of have a good blueprint to stick to, for many golfers, that big extreme change of direction is going to be hard to replicate time after time, unless you are an insanely freak athlete and uh, talented like Matt Wolf. He's crazy, 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 crazy good. Okay, so going to the top of the back swing now, what I want you to feel is you practice this feeling. Right palm, then we're going to grab the golf club, okay, and look at the position we're in. So I want you to feel that you get to the top of the back swing, your right elbow always stays pointing to the ground, not out to the sky. And that would be the most simple way of getting in this position, which allows you to really feel that you get the club looking a little bit more like this at the top. And we introduced this last week, but look here. So I've already got sort of this external rotation in here to the top. This would be very across the line. This is more what we're after. So the hula hoop would be a really great sort of me mechanism here to get the hands and the arms working correctly and orientated around the body much better. Okay, so 
Let's get into uh, our second swing of the night from Andy. So he was saying to me that I really feel like it's hard to get open at impact. So if it's hard to open at impact, I always think you've got to look in the backswing because there's going to be tendencies in the backswing which are stopping this, potentially, or our first port of call. Because if we went straight to sort of trying to fix the downswing, when we've got a little bit of a backswing issue, this could be a massive problem because we could start to not make patterns of movement match. So what we're seeing on these swing is as he's going to the top, he's sort of moving over in this direction. So he's lifting the arms up rather than letting them work deep. And this is forcing him to go more over the golf ball in this direction. So it's looking very much more this way, encouraging this, which is why he's finding it hard to get open at impact. So Andy, the first place I want you to start with this is being able to get in a position where the arms feel a little bit more depth. So the arms don't feel as they worked halfway and then you lift it, sort of getting the arms not, shallow, not, not enough depth and a little bit too shallow, so too close to the back of the head. What I want you to do is make some swings here, feeling as though as you go halfway back, you're tipping the bucket of water while staying in posture over your shoulder, not over your head, okay? So this would really help you get some arm depth. And what I like to see is personally is where my hands are top of the backswing, if I draw a straight line down now, is this line going through my right heel or is it going to be more through the balls of my feet? Okay. More through the balls of my feet on the way but up, more likely to work over because everything's already working over in this direction. So what I would really encourage you to do is, is work through it in this part. Okay. Just grab an alignment stick across the chest. Can we make some really good back swings now? Put our head just on the side of the wall and just make some motion. Don't mind that. <laughs> make some motions, really trying to feel as though our head stays nice and still, okay? Once you've got comfortable with that, then I would really like you to get into a position now where you do some freezers. So you're going to swing it to the top. We're going to feel as though we can almost look in our... Um, windows, if they've got some windows in the house that are full length or mirrors in the bedroom, stand there trying to feel as though the hands are a little bit more around the body, but not as a result of standing up, as a result of staying more in posture. And this is going to give us a much better chance of in the downswing, allowing us to sequence this body better. And a nice simple thought for you all here on getting a little bit more open at impact is someone pulling your left pocket up and around and your belt buckle working for target. So I would simply just make some practice swings, down, up, in, down, up, in, just to really get a great understanding. But first and foremost, everybody, you've got to have a look at where you are at the top of the backswing because that can have a massive impact on the downswing. Okay, let's jump back to the camera now, and let's have another little chat about golfing topics um, at the minute. So... Hit me some questions, guys. So I'd love to sort of hear how you're all doing, what you've been watching recently. Are you watching the golf tonight? Um, what do we think of Lee Westwood? Sort of having two or three unbelievable weeks and uh, crashing out this week. Um, but, I mean, what a run he has been on. What a run he has been on. Exactly what we've been wanting to see. Lee Westwood in a rich vein of thought form. So, 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 so good to see. Okay. Um, Robbie, uh, RB Smith, the email, um, if you put on the post this week, um, just because all the swings will get lost between now and then, and the post will be out Thursday or Friday. Um, I then will give you the email for you all to send, and you can send them all into me from there. We have one more swing that's going to come in today. One more swing. So there's, there's another thing that I want to bring up here. Okay. So where was this? That was it. Okay. So let's think about the last time you play golf, or, if you, or hopefully it, it was being recently, if you're lucky enough to be able to play golf recently. I want you to think and list in these comments down below what was good what was bad okay um who, who who is it um what is is an easy way to remember 
um, to follow through with your swing. Joe, uh, when we start off the next one, we've got one more swing uh, coming up. We will um, talk about that. We'll talk about that for you. Um, okay, so when you last played golf, what was good, what was bad? Um, and what, what, what were you not happy with? And what was the one thing you want to improve? So get in those comments down below. What is the one thing that you really want to improve in your golf swing? That one thing that's going to save you shots. The one thing that's going to help you beat your friends. This is exactly what we want to do with it. If we're, if we're brutally honest, we want to be able to beat our friends time after time after time. What's the one department of your game that would allow you to do this? The one department of your game. I'd love to um, hear what that department of the game is because I think it's obviously going to be um, a few similarities between a few people, um, but there's also going to be some massive start changes between them both. Interesting. Chris has put in here, how do I build confidence on the short puts? You know what? This is, a, this is something that I used to do all the time, Chris. Get a tennis ball, two footers, roll it into a hole. The tennis ball, I know, is a lot bigger, um, but it looks a lot harder to put that ball into the hole. So I used to warm up before going out on the golf course and um, hitting some putts with a tennis ball because you had to be pinpoint accurate with pace, with line, whereas then you get a golf ball, suddenly that hole looks massive. Suddenly when you get on the first green, that hole looks like a bucket. I promise you that. So that's a really kind of simple way, almost like a negative feedback way of, tricking your brain into thinking the hole is um what was i gonna say is uh bigger than it actually is and it's a great way to start um and robbie's put here i seem to struggle with uh the complete um uh, term of my driver um i am very flexible and i practice my swing no problem um i like rush or i get quick so yeah robbie um i'm saying robbie but it's rb and this is a sorry if it's not it's sort of um just preempting it. Um, what I would say is if you're feeling as though um, you're sort of rushing this, we don't want to be in that situation where our swing becomes short and we feel like it's then become slow. Uh, let me let me slip to the camera here and then we'll go into the last two swings um, because I think it'd be a, a great place for us to sort of talk about this and talk about why we're rushing it. Uh, and for me, the rushing of the downswing very much becomes when we're trying to hit the ball with the hands, and this is our main focus, as opposed to our body being the main driver of the golf swing. I always want you to think of your direct route to better scores is feeling as though your body is, is, the, is the stark part of this swing. So my, my thing for you guys is reference your sternum here. If you feel like you're rushing, is your sternum staying quite still in this downswing? Okay, and what I mean by still is it's not rotating up and out. So I want you to always feel that in your golf swing, you're going to start by feeling as though your sternum moves a little bit left and a little bit to target. Get your focus on the body more if your feelings of the swing's rushing and then hit the ball away. Now, if you're feeling you're not completing your backswing, I would do the same thing in a little bit of a freezer. So starting it, pausing, hit that golf ball away. And I, my favorite thing to do with this is like the gears method. So starting in gear one, like if you're in a car, all the way up to gear six, let's say. And then you gradually get a little bit faster, a little bit faster, a little bit faster, a little bit faster. Because if you're someone who's rushing your golf swing, you need reference points to what rushing is. And if you can very much feel as though you can make better swings in gear four, get better swings in gear five, better swings in gear three, you can take those same feels and same references of gears out to the golf course. And if you can do that, then we can take something that we've learned on the range out onto the course. Okay, so I want to just go um, back to Joe here. Um, he put, what's an easy way to remember to follow through with your golf swing? Now, the one thing and the best and the easiest piece of advice I could ever give to somebody is, when you watch Rory McIlroy, when he's in his full pump, he is right shoulder all the way through the target, very much like this finish. This upper half actually then, once this impact sort of overtakes and slings through past the hip line. I want you to think of every shot that you're going to hit, you'll want to really feel as though your right shoulder is all the way through to target. 
Simple as that. That's a great way to follow through. Now, if you're thinking about a short chip shot, same thing. It'd just be extended this way. It wouldn't be here. Now, I would just reference this as, can my right shoulder, relative to the length of the swing that I'm hitting, relative to the impetus and the speed, can it go all the way through to target? A nice, simple way. Okay, guys, let's get into the final swing of today. And this comes from Jamie. And what we're seeing in Jamie's swing here is, um, you bring up his full name here. Sorry, Jamie. Um, I'll do this for you now. Okay. Well, right, Jamie, I can't find your uh, full name. Um, so what we need to reference here is during the back swing, we never really want to see this right leg lock out. This is going to get us in a situation where we look a little bit sort of stacked this way at the top of the back swing. What I really want you to feel is that, yes, of course, during the back swing, our right leg wants to lose flex a little bit, but it never wants to lock out, okay? So I want you to feel as though if it starts here, and I'll place a line stick on the ground, I'll take some videos from the down the line perspective, I don't want to see it lock out. I can see it lose flex, but not lock out. I don't want to see this. It can lose, but not lock. And that is a really nice, simple way of getting the body organized. In the face-on perspective, we'd look a lot more this way, not this way. And it allows us to be able to start our downswing a lot more dynamically. If ever we get in a position where this is locked out, it's very hard for us to start with that nice, powerful downswing move. So that is the main reason why I would always suggest having it lose flex, but not lock out. Okay, guys, let's just jump back to the face-on down here. And hopefully you're sort of uh, enjoying this sort of split screen motion that we've got tonight. And uh, if you did, I'd love for you to hit that thumbs up button um, because um, without that, I don't know if you liked it or not. Um, <laughs> okay, guys, so two more minutes. Let's have all your questions. Fire them in. Um, I'd love to sort of hear anything that... Um, ah, Carlo, before I was about to say that... Um, I was about to ask you any questions that you've got. Um, Carlo put here, Alex, I had my fitting on Thursday. It, I was a bit nervous, but it was a great experience. Now I'm spoiled for choice. P790 or Mizuno JPX21. Guys, get in those comments down below. What do we think? P790s or Mizuno JPX921. What do we think? What do we think? Hmm. Now, what thing I would personally say on this, um, if we were looking at two brands there and we were looking at just two sets of irons, Mizuno are very much known more for their irons. P790, tailor-made, are probably more known for their woods. Personally, my personal opinion on this. Um, so potentially, if um, they're a similar price point, I would personally go down the Mizuno route. But... You have to like the look of this, and this is really important. You have to like the look of this golf club, not only when you see the nice shiny back to it, but what does it look like behind the golf ball? Do you like the look of it behind the back of the golf ball? And if so, there you go. Uh, so Mizuno, Mizuno coming in. It depends on your skill level, very much so. But I think the P790 and the JPX91 is a very similar sort of golf club. Um, I wouldn't say a brand is more kind of, different skill levels. One thing I would say is you have obviously your blades and you have um, your muscle backs, you have your game improvement clubs. That is where I would differentiate it. But if they're both very similar in terms of um, that sort of style within that brand, then I would I would personally go Mizuno. That would be sort of where I, I would go, Carlo. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can see sort of these comments down here. I think a lot of them, um, Justin put here, he bought JPX 921 Hot Metal um uh, pros and they're lovely like anybody that i know that has bought some azuna wines they haven't been disappointed they have not been disappointed so guys that wraps us up for this evening 34 minutes of three golf swings and hopefully some tips on the way don't forget we will be back at the same time next sunday some nice simple tips help you improve and i will put a post out sort of thursday friday time for you to get this in um, so yeah, the perfect fit to the both be perfect for the skill level. So exactly, exactly. Um, so uh, I will give you plenty of time to get your swings in for this week. Watch out for the post on my community page. 
Um, I'll put it out Thursday, Friday time, uh, and you can get your swings emailed in. Don't forget, you have to be a subscriber to the channel to have a chance to be on with these swing analysis. Hopefully you really enjoyed this. If you did really enjoy this, um, would you please click uh, the subscribe button if you've not already. And one thing I'm going to say is, guys, thank you again for the support if you donated to the 72 Hole Marathon. Support's unbelievable. Um, we can't do this without you. So, guys, thank you so much this evening. I really enjoyed this. Hopefully you really enjoyed it. Look forward to catching up with you next week.